Her studio space is an unexpected place, in the west corner of a sunroom in a small town nursing home. She rarely finds time to work on her sculptures as residents, nurses, cooks, administrators, and visitors often engage her, so curious and taken are they by her work. But when she does, she uses the residents as her models while others participate in the process through inquiry, observation, curiosity, and conversation. I want to know how you can so accurately connect visually with the people that you are creating here because uh, it, it is a portrait in, in a, a way. sense in a way and then there's craftsmanship of course you know and that that just kind of grows as you do and do and do and and the other thing is that emotional part and I think that this is the reason why I prefer to make women as, have women as models over men because I can feel a woman and I can feel what I think they feel. And so until the piece gives me that feeling that I think they feel and that I think needs to be communicated, I just fiddle and fiddle and fiddle and take it away and put it on and take it away and put it on the clay until until I get that feeling and that emotion I won't stop. Art has long been about articulating and capturing the essence of beauty in various forms. Michaela Groblocker's work commands our attention as she forces us to reconsider our own ideas of beauty. In the artist's own words, we have an entrenched vanity against and fear toward aging in our culture. Her sculptures confront that very notion head on. Her studio is at Bethany Home, a residential and nursing home facility that for over 100 years has provided care to aging citizens. Michaela's idea was to bring the art into the home and offer intellectual stimulation to the residents. That is evident in the deep relationship she has forged with many of the individuals who live and work there. It has created a community of interest, fascination, and contemplation regarding life, art, mortality, and beauty. What does Helen think of her um, image? Mm -hmm. You know what she said? I think number one, she's really proud. Uh, she's really good. proud. But she's and she the funny thing is she never commented on the baldness. But to me it's amazing. She never and said a word about the baldness. Just the but she, one day, day she stopped yeah. and she said, Is that me? And and I said well, you know, I have to write everything down, you know, because so I wrote down, yes, it's 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 fashioned after you, and she says, am I that crooked? And then you know she pushes herself up on the walker and makes herself stand as straight as she can, and I I thought to myself, oh God, what did I do? You know, I mean because she's you told the truth. In the artist's own words, my art is a slow reveal. It first draws attention with its realism and only then it begins to focus on faces we may choose to ignore. I concentrate on the elderly, on people who are almost invisible, tucked away in nursing homes and hospitals. People who remind us of our own mortality and the inescapable march of time. I want to tell their story, give them a voice and dignity by revealing their noble soul. 
Alan only a short time. But you have captured perfect. What I have felt for the last seven or eight years about her is this, this kind of reflective, special thinking of how she thinks about life. It's there, just in the profile. You know how sometimes we can see and know exactly who's coming behind us just by the, the fragment of of their body contour or their walking. Sometimes the walk, all you see is just a little bit of that aspect of how they walk You know exactly who they are. I know exactly who it is, just based on that very small bit of information because I've been around her for so long. So to me, it's amazing that you can capture that in just the short time that you have.